Game number one. We have Denmark going up against Hungary today. Infernal Shrines is our first map, and yep, now we have a team coached by Zelia. Denmark, that is. Going up against Hungary here. And game number one is going to be a little bit interesting to me personally because I don't know what to expect exactly from the Hungarians. Denmark, on the other hand, enters into the game as the favorite, I would assume. But we are still here at the Nexus contest, so again, just to reiterate some of the rules. Former HTC players are not allowed to play in the tournament, so it gives a chance to uh, newer and upcoming players from all the countries to emerge and show themselves, prove themselves within the contest. But HTC player or former HTC players are still allowed to actually participate as captains or as coaches, so they can help out with the draft and uh, they can also, of course, then help with the strategy and uh, analyze that. So with that being said, we have Mayev being banned out again. Now again, I've I'm really trying to like make a little bit of the distinctions between the Division 7, Division 6 games of Heroes Launch and what we're seeing here, just to show the different levels of play and how that oftentimes affects the draft and also the way that the teams are playing, since in the past few weeks we focused a lot on the lower tiers of Heroes Launch. But you can see that right now, with all the games that we had yesterday on the Nexus Contest and here today, we're actually seeing Mayev being banned consistently. And quite often Genji falls into the same category where he's immediately banned out at the beginning of the game. It's just very impactful heroes if your team can coordinate properly and if you have a high skilled player on that particular hero that can really change the outcome of a match. When you are looking at the lower end of the skill scale then it's a little bit different where those heroes don't have quite the impact because you just don't have these players that are playing on the level or the team has trouble following up in a coordination there is more so of an issue. But especially in this setup here you can see that we have again also a focus on the tank line. That's something that you see basically across the board. Diablo, Garrosh, oftentimes the targets of those bands immediately. And this game is not really any different. Denmark is banning both of them out. And with Malganis also taken off the board we already have a very very heavy focus on banning tanks. Now as a first pick we saw a lot of Toronto already if she wasn't even banned out. So there's still a chance that we're going to see Toranda making an early appearance here again. But you also have to consider that tanks are starting to become a little bit of an issue. Ooh, first pick Zeratul. Okay. That makes it a little bit tricky, I feel, because yes, Zeratul can be a great pick on Infernal Shrines. He can have also a huge impact. But you can definitely start to counter him a bit, not really spec too hard into squishies and just draft a couple of heroes that can deal with him a little bit easier. So it opens up a lot of potential adjustments from Denmark. They at least know what they're up for. They're not going to be blindsided by this in any way. And we have Anubarak and Hanzo being picked super early. So the Anubarak priority, again, already indicates that you want to try and blow some targets up here pretty quickly. I mean, we still have other tanks that he could have picked here. Johanna comes to mind. It just comes to mind. There's quite a few. Hanzo doesn't really shock me too much, considering that Zelia is coaching the team. I mean, Dignitas is was quite famous for first picking Hanzo on Infernal Shrines a lot uh, lately. So that's definitely one of the things that we could have expected. Arrow into stun is also great, has a lot of CC on their end. Wonder if they would go into something along the lines of Tyrande to just follow up on the stun. Might be a little bit more... Give, gives Zeratul more targets. But we have Fafia and Stukov now also taken for the Hungarians. And actually, pretty sweet setup here. I was maybe I'm also expecting a Jaina to make an appearance here over Ophia, just simply because you can follow up onto the Void Prison a little bit easier with her. Still have the wave clear and a lot of burst damage. Tyriel banned out now on the other side. And there's the ban on Taranda, right? So the Hungarians with the same thought process here, just like trying to avoid a little bit having a Nubrak dive in Taranda with a stun and then the quick burst damage that could come out of a second damage dealer here. And in terms of second damage, I mean, there's still quite a few options. They can go down the mage route. We have even Gul'dan open on the map. We have Jaina open. You could go auto attack. Reyna, for example, is still an option for them. But it's also the offlane, and I would really like a place for the setup here, or URL. Again, we talked about those advantages and disadvantages of the Nubarak a lot. For now, they leave the offlane open, and we have Malfurion and Genji chosen. So both of the Shimada brothers in the lineup for them. And the final two picks coming in for the blue team. They still need a tank. They can run Zaratul on the offlane. Don't have to can get a dedicated offlaner here. Zaratul usually likes to roam, but we have seen him occasionally in the early game stuck to a lane because it's how the draft worked out for the team. And, alright, Johanna 
and Jimmy. So Zeratul is going to be stuck topside quite a bit probably, unless they want to rotate someone else over and let him roam after all. But now, with that being known, we're going to see the offlaner choice for Denmark, which is going to be the final pick in the game here. And they are hesitating there a little bit. It's Urel, I like it. Anubarag Urel, the extra armor for the dive, keeping him a bit safer. Big fan of that combo. Koreans played it a lot at the, uh, at the last Eastern Clash, actually, in uh, Korea. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that lineup here for Denmark. There's a lot of kill potential on the side of their opponents, too. But again, Denmark goes into the series as a favorite. So let's jump into the game and find out which team takes it. Game number one. We are in Infernal Shrines and Hungarians. Two at the left side. D. Harthy playing on Johanna. Widra on Zeratul. We have Adam um, Adam Akel on Ophir. Perund on Reyna and Tilondis on uh, Stugov. As to the right side of the map, the Danish team with Drunk Penguin, not to be confused with a Sober Penguin, on Genji. We have Dizzy on Anubarak, um, Kopenhag on Urel, Potato Girl on Malfurion, and Monka S on Hanzo. Alright, level 1 by the way for Dizzy here, immediately getting the spell armor increase for his level 1s in the Rubian armor, especially against Zeratul and Ophir. It's going to help him out a little bit. Zeratul already orientating himself towards the top side, as expected. Now we expect him to take the lane here, at least for the start, and then join the team fights. It's always a little bit weird for Zeratul to be in that spot, because as I said before, he wants to roam, he wants to try and get some ganks going. But in a setup like this, where you don't have a dedicated solo laner, he's usually the one that offers with the wave clear a lot of tools up to the top that he can then utilize. So Urel is going to join him up at the top side and we have a rotation with a four man happening now for both teams more or less. When it comes to the talent choices, pretty much what you would expect um, complete cleave build for Zeratul so far. We're having again also on the side of Ophia, her standard talent taken on one, Ace of Spades on Reyna. So nothing too crazy here. But Denmark, as we said before, is definitely the one who, or the team, that is supposed to do pretty well in this particular match right now. Coached by Zelia himself, but let's find out if the Hungarians can maybe take that first map and crush that dream right there. Zeratul still up at the top, but again, like you can already tell, like when he's going up against Urel here, it's a little bit tricky. The problem is Zeratul lacks one of the components that usually make for a really good solo laner, and that is self-sustain. He just doesn't have it to the extent that Urel can offer it, for example. It's one of the reasons why Blaze is oftentimes such a fantastic hero on the top lane. The same goes for Leoric. You have wave clear, you have self-sustain, uh, so uh, those are really the tools that are great for a solo laner. If you have an additional escape, that's even better. So, jet propulsion or anything. Talking about escapes, Sophia has to escape here because she's being attacked. Potato Girl nearly going down, and Zeratul is looking for the kill and likely to find it. Goes in and completely rips Malfurion into shreds, and they're trying to get more as well now. It's a trade as Reyna falls, Malfurion dies. And we have a lot of pressure here from the Hungarian team after the invade from Denmark. Denmark was trying to go in and steal the camp away. And the Hungarians just said, like, dude, you know what? Hey, ain't happening. I got something to say about that, too. And especially the rotation of Zeratul made that very, very obvious. So with that being said, we're having now also at the top lane, again, the Urel and Zeratul battle. Besides that, if you're looking at talents, pretty much, again, the focus on the Nerubian armor here for Nubarak. So that's definitely him trying to be a little bit more tanky and just acknowledging straight up, listen, I know Nuburak isn't really the most hit point heavy and sustainable hero, and when I dive in, I need something out of that. The one thing that you give up with it, though, good attack against uh, Hagen up at the top, not quite working out against Yorel, though. But the one thing that we still have to say with that is, of course, you give up a little bit of the engage that you have. There's no underking, subterranean shield might still be a thing, but you have to be a little bit more careful with the dives. But they still get the stun out here, and um, hello, Zeratul? Well, that was it for him. Zeratul down, just as the shrine is activating. <laughs> That's a pretty well-timed kill here for Denmark. That worked out nicely. Already disease anchoring the play, but yeah, Hungarians basically just said, well, you know what, with him dead, should probably just like try and push the lanes out here, and already 
the Hearthy is down at the bot lane trying to use Johanna now. Johanna, by the way, on the level 1 also making an adjustment, going straight into the Eternal Retaliation. So cooldown reduction here on the Condemn instead of having the faster engage and disengage here, which we often can see. So I like this decision to just go for the camp here, but to be absolutely honest, if they really would have wanted to, they could have still fought over the Shrine. Zeratul in this early stage of the game, him dying was annoying, but let's face it, the death timer is low, so he could have tried and make that play here. But Ridra is already hearthing back again, because he was just falling into that small, I don't really want to call it a trap, but that engage attempt that we had. Divine Steed, taken by the way on level 7 for Yorel as she just claims the Punisher, this is the first one in the game. We have the blessed momentum for Johanna, and down to the bottom of the map, the blue team is doing quite a bit of progress. Tries to go in for the second tower. Doesn't quite get that. They're trying, but they're not hitting it. So they take one hit away from being destroyed, but that's not quite working out. Top lane, we have Ophia against Urel, and... Oh, there's the kill! Urel takes down Ophia. Zeratul is there, who wants to get the counter kill. Nice dodge by him, and they are going to get the kill eventually. If you get Zeratul now, that would be ridiculous, though. That would be absolutely hilarious not the case. Urel goes down, it's a one-for-one one trade. The Punisher hasn't really done too much either. It was more a rotation from the red team down to the bottom of the map to save their own uh, fort that caused that. Then again, it is the first Punisher, right? And if you look at it, what did they get out of it? They nearly took the fort down, they had basically the entire wall destroyed. So, yeah, it was actually a really good attack. Yeah, I was judging that there for a second. For a moment, I was like, well, they could have maybe gotten more, but if we're realistic, if that is a 5 versus 5 or a 4 versus 4 at the top lane with the Punisher, you're not going to get a whole lot out of it in that case. So that worked out quite well. Dizzy, on the other hand, is already trying to set a potential trap up for the camp. But now that they are sniffing out that there is actually a little bit of a Danish presence, they're actually moving away from it and don't even commit to the camp. Nine and a half in levels against the. Uh, Level 9 that we're seeing for the Hungarians. Level 7 talents. Still no subterranean shield, by the way. So instead, we're seeing him go full carapace build. Dizzy wants to be a proper tank. He wants to be a real boy. I uh, wonder if they could have just gotten into a different tank there, but I think they're really hoping for the, DC, uh, for the CC and still for the engage that they can get with this. And here comes the engage. Arrow comes in. The X strike marks the spot. And bam! Down goes Stukov, and he might not be the only one. They are high on the heels of Jimmy. Penetrating round, saves him for now. And yeah, Hansel can't connect the last shot here. The job well done. The level 10 abilities, of course, immediately being used. And this is the big window that you could use. If you know you hit level 10s 10 seconds sooner than your opponent, you can try and force the engage. If you already planned that ahead, you can really try and just force it, and that's what they did. They used their heroics immediately in the fight got rewarded with a kill and a camp that they now stole away too. So we have by now both teams on level 10 abilities. We get the Hyperion in here, Blessed Shield, Void Prison of course. But we still have quite a few cooldowns also up for the opponent's team, especially that Twilight Dream can of course be a nuisance if it hits properly. But both of the teams are more so waiting now for the next shrine to be activated. Four against two in terms of kills. 10 versus or 11 versus 11 in levels and the next shrine is going to spawn at the bot side and this is where most of the wall has already been taken down the fountain is still there so the danish team still has an option to move back during the fight and simply top up hp and of course their mana points as well the camp timing that we're having here for the danish team is actually really good though i really like it so it forces either zaratul to stay top or they're going to lose that forward one of the two Need to make that rotation in time now down to the bottom. They're even trying to see if they can maybe kill Ophia here, but that's not happening. But now it's going to be, if they move in, a 5 versus 4 on the Shrine for the time being. Because you can already tell, Zaratul is sitting there saying, like, guys, I need to take this. If not, we're going to lose the fort. And so we're going to see that head start for the Danish team, for sure. And they are already on the spot. Here comes the arrow. The fight is forced, and they're trying to go straight for Stukov. X-Strike goes in, and Stukov actually survives. Great play by him, too. Immediately pushes everybody out once that the uh, engagement starts. And that's a lot of cooldown burns with very little value. And Zeratul, after de-pushing the camp topside, is now making his way down here. 
30 minions against 4. So definitely a bit of a lead. Hyperion being used to control the zone as well. But with just outside poke alone, there's a very good chance that Denmark claims another Punisher here. They should be able to. But of course, the position on the Shrine is now in the hands of the Hungarians. And they are going in. There they go. And we have Denmark committing now to the fight again. But look at Drunk Penguin on his Genji. He's incredibly low, trying to move away. Good Twilight Dream to save him. And he actually moves out. And here's the Arcane Punisher claimed by the Danish team. Well done by them. Good job. Moving straight in now through the bot lane. Urel already splitting off towards the middle. Trying to also... Oh, actually not going to the top lane. Instead, just moving straight down to the bottom. I thought she could have maybe tried to simply go for the fort on the top side. But she's going to try and make an attack happen. Here's the cocoon. We have Genji taking down Zeratul in the middle of the map in the meantime as this fight is raging on. And he's not going to be the only victim. Stuko falls as well. And with Urel and the Nuborak in the thick of things, I think we're going to very quickly see another one fall. And that's the case. Oh my god, it's going to be a team wipe. Five-man team wipe as Hanzo's arrow stuns out the last target. And now we're having nine kills against two. Two-level lead, a fort down at the bot lane. Urel on her way to the top where she can deliver a second fort being eliminated. That was actually really, really well done here. The Danish team just going absolutely ham. Zelia is going to be proud. They're going to be done with this game. Going to be Coach Zelia. Are you proud of us? And you better say yes, because that was actually really well done. Genji getting the solo kill against Zeratul before the fight even started in the middle. That was already a huge deal. And yeah, at this point, pretty sick here. To the top, there's a second fort falling. Or is it? Yeah. <laughs> For a moment I was like, wait a second, you can't tell me that's going to survive on a hit point, right? Because they retarget, so yeah. That was not quite the same thing. Okay, so two levels, the lead for now. Let's look a little bit on the numbers here, especially when it comes to the damage department. I mean, our fear are currently on 18,000. And we have 21k for Genji. I mean, again, there's a reason why Genji is banned out most of the time, right? So, yeah, pretty solid here. I mean, Urel, as you would expect, is really taking the numbers in terms of the siege damage, her being on the solo lane and oftentimes rotating even into the middle to get the experience here. And trying to screw Zeratul up again. Vidra is having a rough game. Like him dying now, I think two times, yes, twice. It was a bit annoying for them. It's not like the rest of the team uh, survived much more than he did. But yeah, still a bit of a nuisance. 16 on the other hand is going to help him, right? And now that we're having also Stukov with his viral reaction on level 13, that might things make things a little bit easier if they want to lock someone down. It's just they don't really have too much follow-up for the Void Prison. They can still use it, but it's not like there's a Ring of Frost, an Apocalypse, or anything else stacked behind it. So the combo is not quite there. You can maybe get the Jaws in from Morphia, but only to an extent. So there is some synergy, but it's not really one of these wombos that we oftentimes see when Zaratul is being played and them trying to just execute that properly. They had a bit of a rough time in the last few fights. They fought actually well once they were in the Shrine, uh, but now they are two levels behind, they're talent behind, and it's rough. It's really rough. Look at this Anubarak build, by the way. Let's take a closer look at that. So, goes into Ruby and Armor, into Shed Exoskeleton for the movement speed, the Chitinous Plating that we have there as well, and then even going for the Urticating Spines. I haven't seen that in a long, long time. Arrow comes out, talking about things that we're seeing. Here comes the engage. They're trying to go into uh, on Ophia, and that's the kill. Get the kill here. And especially the debilitation is really, really important here because that's a talent you don't see all that often. But against Ophia, they're trying to make sure that she gets no damage in. Zaratul might fall here too. They already have two kills. Anubara goes in for the deep dive, and they make it a triple kill. Denmark in complete control of this game number one. We're having at the same time now also another Fort Destroyer, that's Fort number three. They're even trying to find out if they can maybe drop Johanna at the top, and that could be the case. Ooh, barely moving out here. Barely, barely getting away from it. They're still seeing uh, topside, Urel, trying to get the Punisher while the rest of the team is opening up the wall already as it stands. So, let's see. It's gonna be tough. I mean, now. They don't have to push this farther. They have the wall completely opened up. If they can put some damage on the key, it would be great. But right now, why risk anything? It's a three-level lead right now. And the Frozen Punisher is going to be on the way in a second. They're already poking. Zeratul moves in. 
They don't have 16, they don't even split anyone off. It's also a little bit tricky because all of the lanes are pretty much pushed out at this point. There's very little experience to be gained on the lanes until you want to move all the way out there. But they don't have a level 16 talents and now they have to try and defend the keep. Three levels down, the stat advantage alone is insane. So right now, this is tough. Yeah, Hyperion comes in, here's the arrow into the back line. Ophia gets jumped, but Anubarak is only hitting Jimmy here. They're trying to go for Diharthi, and that's the end of Johanna. Jojo is down, and there's no tank at the front line anymore as we see the first keep of the game fall 14 minutes in. Ridra on his Zeratul is dead as well. They're going for Jimmy. Reyna is down, and then all of a sudden we went from potentially taking a keep to definitely taking the core. Core is falling as Denmark is about to claim victory in game number one against Hungary. Morphia goes down too, and with 16 kills, 2-2, two, two, the game finishes out. Denmark taking the lead in the best of three series here at the Nexus Contest. Game number two, Denmark in the lead at the Nexus Contest. The Hungarians a little bit in trouble in the last one. Got a bit outplayed here, and now we have Brax's holdout. That's our second map. Draft was definitely... I mean, the draft in general was just a bit better, and uh, the execution as well from Denmark. Especially on the execution level, they did quite well here. And it was a bit of a warm-up game for them, let's be honest here. In the early game, yes, we had a couple of counter-attacks by the Hungarians, but then in general, just the team fights going very well in favor of Denmark. They played this quite nicely. Definitely listening to the coach calls from Zelia here, doing well with that. But yeah, first ban and first pick are going over to Denmark, which means that we actually have now Hungary taking the map pick. So the loser in a series has a choice if they wanted to pick the map or if they want to go for first pick and first ban, which is quite often what teams do. But in this case, now they actually go on to Braxis. And back in the HGC days in particular, the, the reason why you would do that was always you were hoping that your opponent doesn't really have anything prepared there or you go into a map where you have a certain strategy that you want to execute over your opponent. So that might be what Hungary is hoping for here. My F is banned out again. And now that we're having actually... Uh, Braxis as the map, and it seems as if we are not going to see Denmark commit to a Genji first pick, but they really don't want to run into the problem that he rotates between the lanes too quickly and uh, puts the top lane, for example, under pressure in the solo. So they're banning out Genji right away. And the Tyrael ban again. It's actually a little bit surprising to me that they're this, ho like, homing in this much on Tyrael. They banned him out already on the last map, which I understood a bit more considering that it was Infernal Shrines. He has the mobility in his favor, that's definitely good for Tyrael on Braxis, if he makes the rotation there. So we're gonna get that out. And Ana banned two. Probably to just make sure that there is no combos being set up with Gul'dan, Li Ming or any other hero in a really early Garrosh pick. Quite, like immediate jumping in onto Garrosh. Now I'm saying early because I could have totally seen them go into Turanda here and then uh, hope for Garrosh or Diablo in the next pick, which would have been easily possible because there's only one tank that would have been picked on the other side, if any. So Garrosh instead, just trying to get, especially in the four-man rotation at the bottom of the map, the value out of him. Diablo has the counter pick, and Kalthas! Look at that, we're gonna see the world burn a little bit here. Kalthas as a huge priority for the Hungarian team. And now still the option to go into a Turanda if they would want to, if they feel that Garrosh into a Garrosh flip into a Turanda stun or the taunt later into a stun would really work out for them. So they have the chance to do both here. But with that being said, Mages oftentimes still reigning supreme at the bot lane. Junkrat for poke damage first of all. Probably going to be in a four man. Can be played on the solo, but it's rare. And Deckard Kane, the old man. Uh, it begins Deckard. Actually, if you're honest, it kind of ends with uh, Diablo Immortal, I want to say. But yeah, the hopes are still here, old man. But yeah, you lost a little bit of your appeal and agility, I have to say. Okay, bans. Let's see what we're having on the third one. With the setup, you can ban the offlaner still. Cool done. Alright. 
want to make sure that Gul'dan is not in the mix. Again, they already banned Ana, now they're banning out Gul'dan too. They have already Kalthas. Could still go into Liming here. Junkrat alone is already going to be a nuisance with a continuous poke in the four-man rotation. You need that wave clear. Kalthas provides a lot of that. And we could see a support ban on the side of Denmark here with the setup that they're running. Trying to see what they're worried on on the bot lane. No, it's the top lane instead. Malthiel banned out. Okay, that's definitely good for Garrosh. Must be less careful about that last ride's wrecking him whenever he's going to get attacked. And gets his extra armor stacked in. And let's check out what the picks here are. I mean, they need some more consistent damage. They could go into Jimmy, I suppose, White Man first of all, for the heals. But what's the extra damage dealer down at the bottom of the map? I mean, we have seen Phoenix uh, Alarak very likely going to be part of the, not part of the rotation. He should be at the top lane. So now when they have Denmark, at least in the know who they have to, who they are up against on the top side. And the second damage for them is going to be an interesting one. With Junkrat already in the mix, you can still go for Bloom and Mage. You can go for... Yeah, you can go Jimmy too, if you want here. Grey main, alright. That works too. And you rel for the solo lane again. Alright, it's a pretty solid setup. Good wave clear on the four man. Deckard Kane for the lockdown can also follow up on Garrosh to an extent. And now the damage dealer for Hungary at the bottom of the map. They need a little bit more sustained damage. Or are they really running Alarak down at the bottom and set someone else up top? I highly doubt it. But I mean, we've seen some crazy things. And yep, there we go. Thrall. Thrall can be part of the four man if they want to go into Trash Lightning. Or they can just send him topside and go for Echo of the Elements. It's a pretty melee heavy setup. But only having a mage with cooldown heavy abilities down to the bottom of the damage scale is going to be a bit tough. But well, let's see if it works out for them. Denmark is in the lead. They want to make it a 2-0. Let's find out if Hungary can change that in game number two. Game number two in our series. Hungary going up against Denmark. And to the left, Diehathi on Diablo for the Hungarian team. Parent on Kalthas. Adamakel on Alarak. To learn this on white main. And we draw this time on Thrall instead of Zaratul. Going for the Echo of Elements, so very likely to head towards the top lane, which means Alarak would be part of the four-man rotation. Oh, well, sorry, not rotation, but the four-man bot lane. Drunk Penguin for the Danish team, playing on Grey main. We have Dizzy on Garrosh. We have Kopenhag on Urel. Monka S on Junkrat. That's a perfect hero, by the way, for that nickname. And we're seeing Potato Girl on Deckard Kane. Let's put some English on that and let's have a look at this. There's a little bit of a kill squad that we have here. Let's see if they can actually get a kill with this. Already sitting at the side. It's not quite working out the way that they want, I would assume. Urel is already realizing, okay, I probably should head to the top lane. Does that. So we have Urel against Thrall. And here's the rest of the team moving in. They're aiming for Diablo. Going for him, and the gravity lapse is ruining that play. Get wrecked, son. That backfired quickly. <laughs> Denmark is trying to be sneaky. The sneaky Danes are trying to get that early kill. They wrap around the entire map, set up a gank, and then they go straight in for Diablo, and Diablo is looking at it and say, like, you fucking kidding me, dude? Pushes him into the wall, flips him over, wall stun, tower damage. Kalathas comes in with a gravity lapse and BAM! There's the first blood right there. Then again, top side we have Thrall taken out by Urel and Greymane. So that's the counter kill and this one hurts a lot more. Because now there's no one to soak the experience here. Alarak is already rotating from the bot lane. But that will not change the fact that first of all they're losing a huge part of the wall. Second of all, they just lost an entire wave in experience. And their entire setup is now screwed up too. So this is definitely unfortunate for the Hungarians, especially considering how the bot lane went at the beginning, which turned out to be really nice for them. So for now, we have at least in the kills, even turns, but you can see a little bit of a lead in experience. Well, the setup is finally normal again, but of course Greymane offers a little bit more than just that explosive damage and the 
ability to take down structures. He's pretty decent on camps too, and that's exactly what Drunk Penguin is currently using here. Potato Girl is even helping out a bit, so the balance at the top lane is already very much so screwed in favor of Denmark. One tower down, getting a camp in, so Urel can really push this hard. And she's not the only one up there, we have Greymane still in the mix as well. But Alarak is coming in now too, realizing that they need someone to help out with this. The second tower is down already as we speak. Bot lane also attacked. And then Mark with a level 4 talent in their hands. Right down. Diablo getting thrown around a little bit. But there's a lockdown on at least an attempt. Engaging again onto that. Alarak is in trouble at the top lane. He's not the only one. Greymane goes in and wants the kill. Alamakel with his Alarak misses the combo here. And they are wrecking. Denmark is absolutely murdering this fort in the early game. It's like, holy moly. Alarak might even fall here. There's the jump. There's the hit. And he goes down. Dead as HGC in the pro scene. Unbelievable. Diablo at the bottom lane is suffering the same fate. And after that little mishap in the early game, we're having Denmark just absolutely wrecking here. <laughs> it's like, Jesus, calm down. Urel is already zoning out the top. That's the first fort gone. We're three minutes in. We're three minutes into this bloody game. And we have an 11 lead. We have a fort down. And the first objective is very likely going to end up soon in the hands of the red team. Denmark go for another kill, a flip, a kill. The rotation happened. The four man now at the top side. Junkrat is holding the bottom all alone. <laughs> this is actually getting ridiculous. Denmark is all over this map. I mean, this is getting nuts. They're even stealing the camp away now. Dizzy is anchoring the play at the side. But this is brutal. Denmark definitely currently looking like the way stronger team here, all classing their opponent a bit. <laughs> a bit. And now also aiming for that first objective. But we still have at the top side the camp moving in. Uh, this time it's Junkrat who's poking from a distance, and Widra is the only one there. But we already have Alarak trying to join the rest of the team in the fight down at the bottom of the map. Level 7 talents are in. And here comes the immediate attack again with a bit of an earlier start from Denmark. They're trying to go for the kill. Great gravity lapse from Perun. Kelthas with a really good move here, but Diablo is still low. White main trying to keep everyone alive as much as possible, but now Alarak gets thrown in. Alarak about to fall, tries to escape, but no, Urel is having none of it. Jumps straight on his face and kicks him with the hooves. <laughs> this is getting nuts. There's the objective at the top lane, already raking havoc, and <laughs> Thrall is sitting there, he's like, guys, are you kidding me? I need some help here, like, are you watching this? I'm getting wrecked, baby. I need someone to help me out. And it's not gonna be Diablo, I can tell you that much. Two level lead in the early game. Ah, but look at that. Finally a little bit of damage onto Garrosh himself, and he's spreading the bombs, he's a nice boy, but White Mane gets caught by Junkrat, flipped in, and she is down. <laughs> we have the wall destroyed and the keep itself. The keep is already taking damage. Now, I'm not sure if they can really take it here, but damn. <laughs> like, what a brutal opening into this game. Four man defense. Move away from this one, but this is brutal. Absolutely brutal. Bot lane. Urel is there and is already starting to take another wall. Uh, Alara can try and get a combo in, but let's face it, two levels ahead, five kills against one, a massive lead in structures on the map too. This is not really looking like it's going to be a good game for the Hungarians. They are currently just hoping that there's a few mistakes made by Denmark that they can capitalize on, because this is not what you want to see. Intercession on 7, Ancestral Healing on, on uh, Thrall, pretty much standard builds. I don't even think Thrall completed his quest. No, he didn't! Thrall is sitting at 18 stacks now. We are six minutes in, lost the entire top lane, and he's not even stacked on his level one. That is insane. 16 on Kalthas, also here now with the applied force on the side of Alarak. Intercession, as I mentioned before, we have this Marakt for Potato Girl. On the got Kane. Quicksilver bullets, and uh, a brutal game. Absolutely brutal game here. The level 10 is what really scares the hell out of me. I mean, they've already been doing an insane amount of work without it, and now they have heroic abilities, and of course, the immediate move towards the boss. Alarak is checking it out, but what are you gonna do? You're gonna contest that? I mean, good luck with that if you really make the play for it. 
they can watch this, but they won't be able to do anything about it. This is not happening. So this is going to be a free boss. And even after that, we have a two-level difference where they now can push with the boss at level 10. Get another four down here. Get even more control over the map. And with level 10, they can get a couple of kills. And that rotation is way too late. That rotation from Kalthas back to safety is way too late. Like, <laughs> the Riptide are hitting nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> they still get the kills. The Lornado is there. Kalthas is down and Diablo falls. But the Riptide are hit absolutely jack shit. <laughs> like, I think they pushed him out. Urel pushed him away, if I saw that correctly. And Junker is just sitting here. It's just like, you kidding me, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't really matter too much. It, at the worst, it's a kill steal, but they got the kills anyways. Alarak talking about kills is also down. This is nine kills against one now. They have another free fort, and it's really. I, I mean, this is tough. This is tough. If you are a fan of the Hungarian team, you're not having a good time right now, and you just hope that it, within their group they're gonna have better luck against other teams because. If that's a comeback, if we see Hungary taking this game, that would be the game of the century. Right now, they're just getting completely shredded. They're still a level away from level 10 abilities. And the boss is moving through another objective that's soon going to fall into the hands of the Danish team. And they're just doing way too well. Maybe a kill here? Maybe a kill? Thrall is dead? But, yes, we see a counter kill. All right. That gave quite a huge chunk of experience, by the way, <laughs> with that level difference that we have. It's not going to change the outcome of the objective, though. If anything, uh, you might like prefer for it to be delayed so that they can get Garrosh back. But yeah, there's the level 10 finally in. And what are we seeing as Talons? Especially Thrall interests me right now. Lightning Blast to the combo off with an Earthquake and get a Phoenix into play. Pyroblast. Pyroblast, baby, and Sundering. Believing in the power of the flanks. Urel is dealing with a top wave, by the way, taking that down, especially, of course, the Guardian in the back. But down at the bottom, that's the big push, and that's why they want to have the first keep. And talking keeps, this one is also already going to be attacked in just a bit by the Catapult here. Bot lane, on the other hand, the defense is ready. Here comes Garrosh, here come Urel too, and they're trying to go for the first keep. And this should be an easy one. About to jump in, there's the flip. Don't even need the taunt. No, actually went for it, and Diablo falls. Diablo is dead, had the souls though, so he's going to be back in a, biz in a second, Gravity Lapse misses, and there's the hit again, down goes Alarak, it is a nightmare for the Hungarian team, four kills against Alarak, three against Diablo and Thrall, the front line is suffering, three level difference, and we're having the keep now attack too, can they save it somehow, the Guardians are still in the back doing damage, and there's a massive wave also that pushed in and soaking up most of those shots, uh, falling a little bit low though, and they might actually have to let this one go for now. But 12 kills against two, still pretty solid. Still pretty solid. Whew, maybe we're level 10. I mean, at this point of time, when you're so far behind, you're kind of abandoning a lot of the normal rules of Heroes of the Storm, where you're trying to go into the same talent as your opponent before you force a fight. If you're this far behind, you already know this is not going to happen. So you need to try and do something else, and that is getting some kills, talking kills. <laughs> Didn't he see that? Alarak? Garrosh just walks. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> he has a family. Come on, guys. I'm actually, my mind is blown that Alarak didn't see Garrosh moving out. I mean, he moved right into the vision of the wave, but he must have looked somewhere else. I had the screen adjusted towards the top a little bit. Because Garrosh just walked in and took him down. And now they're getting Diablo 2, aren't they? Yeah, there's the taunt. Bullet to the face, right between the eyes. Diablo is dead, so is the keep. Denmark, it, this, is, this is a statement. This game is a statement. They're saying, well, everybody's talking about like uh, France and Sweden. I was like, did you see this, guys? Did you see what we just did? Have fun with that. Coach Zelia, that's the value right there. You want to take a camp? You're not taking a camp. Only we take camps. You didn't ask for our permission can only take a camp if we allow you to do so, and we don't. Four <laughs> level lead, 15 kills against two. <laughs> this game is an execution. I have to, again, throw that in. This is the map choice of the Hungarians. Hungary went for the map choice here. They said, boys, we want to play Brexit because we feel this is a game where we have a good escape route, where we have actually a plan how we can win this. 
And Denmark came in and said, well, I think you do, but we have something prepared here as well, and our draft is just going to wreck yours. The early game rotations towards the top lane were absolutely beautiful, and them having that much pressure that they can take the early fort even, that was fantastic. Now the boss is moving on to the top lane, it's the last remaining keep on the side of the blue team. And I think Denmark wants to end here. They nearly have 16 and it should drop into their hands just as they move through. And to be absolutely honest with you, they should have 16 before Hungary has level 13. That's what we're looking at right now. This is how bad that is. Urel jumps in, jumps in deep. They isolate Diablo again. Here comes the kill against White Main. Oh, maybe not. Pyroblast goes in. Because Bullet has actually also hit hard. And here's the Reptire. Doesn't get the kill, but gets them low for sure. 16 talents against level 10 talents. A two talent lead for the Danish team. As the keep goes down, they try to go for the kill against Thrall. And they might find it with Junkrat. No. Don't get the kill just yet. Still a 5 versus 5, but it's all eyes on the core now. As the boss goes in, another flip on Diablo, and he is dead. Down for the count this time. No more assaults for him. Greyman gets throw in, and Kelthas dies, and this is just a massacre. 17 kills against 2. Make it 18. We are seeing the core fall. The boss already on it. They're trying to go for even more kills. They find one against Alarak. But this is going to be the end of it. The core down 2-0 victory for Denmark. 19 kills against two. Fantastic series by the Danish team and a well-deserved victory as they take it on Braxis Holdout against Hungary.